Okay, so we're gonna get started here. It's just a little bit of painting. It's uh, just shy of 9 p.m. here, so we could probably do this for about an hour for sure. But uh, just gonna go back to uh, what I've been working on, which is uh, my gallo glass. I've got one guy done and almost a second one done. So this morning, uh, well, I'll show you where we're at right now, part of this unit. And uh, this one's complete. And we did a little bit of a wash. Uh, well, we finished up the painting this morning, but we did a wash of this Nuln oil on them to darken them up a little bit. So all we've got to do is touch up um, with a brighter silver. Uh, around his axe and a little bit of his helmet and this figure will be completely done and we can move on to the third one so uh, and um, These are in pairs if you guys didn't see how I was uh, doing it the other day uh, There's 12 figures and there's three sets of two. So it's got to be um, Three stands of four figures each and we're gonna mix them up in the poses and afterwards after we're completely done with all 12 figures so Okay, so we're done with the Nuln Oil. Um, we, we based um, in this lead belcher, and then we did the Nuln Oil over, uh, over it, and then we're going to just touch up with um, the layer, which is Iron Breaker, which is a little bit brighter, okay? So, uh, let's put those away and mix this guy up. And last time we used this, we dropped one of these uh, and we will trim this guy up a little bit here let's find the the brush we were using this one should be fine this is the the brush wiper offer so uh we've had that one quite a bit now but it does just fine for what we need to do really awkward having a water over here on the left hand side but I'm trying to keep it a little uh Less cluttered over here on the right. Don't want to block you. So, if you just jump three minutes in, I organized uh, my painting. As you can see, that my paint cluttered here with the with the paints and stuff. We just moved them off to the side for now because as soon as we get done doing, start doing the third figure, we're going to be all up in it again. So, let's uh, let's adjust this back how we had it. Okay. All right. So we're going to just do a little bit of. Uh, Touching up this figure, which will literally take a moment. Let's, uh, let me take my glasses off so I can see. I always get a kick out of that. Okay. And all we're going to do is not a whole lot of paint. And all we're going to do is go over here and hit the parts that be the shiniest, which would be like the edge of the blade, the top, anything that would, that shine would catch on. And to brighten up the helmet as well, because we put some of this on the helmet. And this is the second pose. This is a second figure of the same pose. And so I have two guys that look similar, but different. And I'll show you guys what that looks like right now. Because we're not done with them. Like I said, I didn't have a whole lot to do. Let's move this out of the way. And put these two guys side by side. So they still have, um, but um, but th and there's some similarities in the leggings and stuff like that. But uh, no, they're not the same. Okay, so we're going to set these guys off to the side and start working on our next guy. Now the guy we're going to work on next is uh, this set of two figures here, and um, these guys kind of have the big axe thrown over the shoulder. So we're going to start working on one of them, and then we'll do the other one. All right, so let's bring our uh, what 
I believe it was on Saturday or Sunday when we did those. Um, and uh, well, we've already got that done. Do is flash helmets, that kind of stuff. So make sure we can put this somewhere where it's not going to fall down. Okay. All right, this guy right here. All right, so again, I was talking, I said in one of the videos that anything that sticks out past the stand, I usually paint last because invariably in turning this figure around, this end of the ax is gonna end up getting scuffed. So if I go and paint that towards the beginning of the process, by the time I'm done with the figure, I'm gonna have the end of it. It's gonna be scuffed up, but I'm gonna have to repaint it anyways. So I'm gonna leave his ax for this guy last okay so we've got uh, we've got some uh, leggings to do on him or some hose and um, let's go ahead and do uh, the flesh on him okay so we'll come over here let's get all these metallic colors out now is my leather brown still alive looks like uh, when you breathe some life into it sure this is set correctly all right this is uh the yeho red leather okay our black is still good our white is still good let's see if our sunny skin tone is still good it is okay cool all right good uh, let's move this off to the side, move the painted figures out of the way. All right, ready to rock and roll. All right. So, we're going to get our uh, bottom, bottom mix color here. Use a red leather with some black on it. A little bit more. Okay. We're happy with that. This is going to be our darkest shade there. Let's, turn the, let's kick the fan up a notch. There we go. All right, need to get some air circulation. Okay, so we're just going to paint all the flesh parts in this color. And this brush is almost about to go to the go to the way of the, um, to do the basing. It's starting to become incorrigible a little bit. So um, we don't throw them away. We just, uh, we have them, we save them to do more messy, imprecise things. So, um, as a matter of fact, I cleaned house on brushes earlier this year and I had brushes I'd probably had for 15 years, I never threw away. So I threw them away because I hadn't used them in a long time, but they were really, really bad shape. They were like brushes that you would use to like, uh, if you needed tools that had been so bad that that's, uh, that's uh, how they didn't have really much of a purpose other than that. So, okay, so let's paint him completely in that shade. Let's do a little bit of assembly line. I know it's gonna be, let's go grab the other guy. It's just like him, and let's paint all of his fleshy parts in the same color. Okay. Yeah, I ended up filming on, on Monday a set of battles. So originally we were going to get four players. So once I found out four players were going to come in on Monday or for our normal game night, I told Mitch, let's just do, uh, let's just do a theme thing we have is um, you can't do two games filmed at once. So you have to play one at a time or um, it's just too chaotic. So what ended up happening is we filmed on Friday and did a set of, uh, set of battles on Friday. Um, a, a dark in the skies theme. And then uh, 
Monday morning rolls around, you know, we get together in the evening, Monday morning rolls around and I get a, a notification from one of the players saying they're not going to make it. Well, now we're back to three players. So with three players, we can film. So I planned on filming, show up uh, with the filming thing. And unbeknownst to me, a fourth guy showed up that I hadn't counted on. So we weren't able to do a true round robin, but you guys got to see some new players. And you know, of course, Luke showed up and you guys got to see Patrick as well. It worked out just fine, even with a howling dog. So I just finished watching the video. I, I normally don't rewatch them. Um, before I put them out, but I rewatched the video um, just this evening uh, towards the end, a couple hours ago. And it wasn't as chaotic as I thought it would have been. So that's good. I, I don't want to put something out there that's just really confusing. But um, I do want to film every time we get together. But <clears throat> I think next time four people show up, we're just going to go ahead and film anyways and just kind of do it the same way that uh, we did last time. You know, you may not be able to see all six games because that's what it would be. Uh, at least you can see a variety of players. So I think that'll, uh, that'll be uh, a better option. Okay, so we've done all of, the, of that base color. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the flesh on both of these guys. I did the bottom, bottom color on him and then him. Then I'm gonna kick it up a notch, make it a little lighter and then do him and then go back to him. So in other words, so I don't Try to avoid picking up the figure as many times as, as, as possible. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we still have the base color there. We're going to add more of the red lead on there. We changed brushes because I just wasn't getting the kind of control with that one that, uh, that I was needing. So we're going to just change brushes here. I've got some... I need some more paint on that. All right, so we're gonna just go in here and luckily it looks like they didn't give this guy bugged eyes, which means I don't have to paint his eyes then. That's a good thing. I don't mind painting the eyes, but if you paint them, they end up being out of scale anyway. So my preference is not to paint the eyes. So my preference is to not have them cast them on. Um, if you got... And it's kind of interesting that with all these figures being Essex, both uh, that did all the Essex figures, but sometimes they have the eyes pictured on uh, usually you have whatever uh, mannerisms or, or style some of the figures are done in. Which generally means you either like all the figures or you don't. Um, there's a couple, there's one figure manufacturer in particular um, that I don't really care for, even though they seem to have a pretty big following. And it has to do with, uh, and again, when I say I don't like them, it's if I was going to sculpt figures, they would look like crap. Okay, so it's just the style they're done with are not my favorite. Big cheekbones. So uh, it ends up with all the figures end up kind of looking all the same. And I don't really like that look of those in particular. So. But there's. And I don't mind mixing figure manufacturers, so. Okay, so we've done that shade there. And like I said, just about every figure manufacturer makes figures I like. I may not like all their entire line, and I may not like the style of many of them, but there's almost some that have merit. So, options are good. There's some figures that are care for plastic. I know some people like them, so just being able to, the fact that some people can like plastic and there's plastic figures now available, that's, that's good for the consumer. Options are 
choices are good. So. I don't know if I'm saving any time by doing this. Okay, so let's kick this up a notch then again. And you know, again, if you guys just wanna say hi, feel free to say hi, you got any questions or, you know, you guys have watched any of these, you know, I get on a ramble sometimes, so. Um, we're gonna attempt to, do, well, I've done it. I've painted four, eight figures at once. Uh, it's not my preference. I'd rather just do one, have a guy to show for it. All right, so we're just gonna paint the tips of the, I've got to say, I'm not a huge fan of Essex, but these are top-notch figures, these in particular. I'm not a fan of Essex because a lot of their figures kind of look the same and they're kind of uninspiring and you've seen them a, a bunch of times. You've seen people paint Essex army packs and oh, there's nothing wrong with them. They all look very similar whether they're Spanish, Italian, or what have you. I'd rather paint figures that you don't see pictures of them painted online. It's a little bit more exciting. Guys are um, really top notch, uh, including these. So. Okay, we have a commentary, I think. Uh, uh, how you doing, Big Al? Uh, last couple DVA games, you haven't mentioned the figure manufacturers. Yeah, the problem is, is I kind of had to go to a new format. I I've got to make the whole e editing process easier on me. Because if you make the editing process easier on me, um, I'm more tempted to video every, every game. And I think that that's what, um, that's what I'm more interested in. Yeah, the last couple videos, I haven't done it because we've kind of had a... Um, well, you, a lot of the, a lot of the figures have already been on videos, and um, yeah, so I don't I want to get away from doing the whole uh, flyby thing because that creates a lot of editing, which means the um, you know when I get home from a game night, I'm here about ten thirty. I still need to piece it together and um, and uh, what you call exporting it, which is makes it sound like it's up uploading it to YouTube, but it's not. It's compressing it in a format that can be sent out. And that process takes about an hour and a half. I don't want to add another hour of editing because it'll just be longer for it to, uh, to go out. But um, yeah, you can always ask what the figure manufacturer is there. Uh, when you watch the video, you know, I'd take, put a comment on there. Hey, who makes those uh, Nubians or what have you? Um, Luke's Nubians that he played last time. You know, who makes them? Well, it's Essex. Essex makes those those guys. And uh, I don't know if you watched that video, but he, it was an army that he bought uh, probably at a discount on eBay. And um, his uh, bowmen were mounted on uh, 15 millimeter deep instead of 20s. But we made it work for the, for the video. Uh, I just hadn't taken a look out of it. So, but it worked out okay. So now we're going to add the sunny skin tone here to the uh, to the mix here with the uh, red leather. Yeah, I can't keep the same format because it's to make sure that we film every game that we do. That's kind of priority over talking about the figures. Um, I don't get really excited talking about other people's figures either. I mean, uh, you know, not to poo-poo them, but some of the figures that that show up there are not painted to the best of standards because they're bought like at a super discount or what have you. So, but they've, they've been in most of the other videos. So, uh, almost everything that, um, that Mitch and Luke have are, um, Essex. Um, so, um, Mitch had a lot of figures that were based for Tactica 
and the basing is just it's not dbx basing it's totally different so he ended up rebasing a lot of his armies and then he had extras because tactical armies are very big so he ended up selling the extras for other people to kind of put together this is probably four or five years ago so the army that he has but he's um he basically has one of each instead of uh you could you can make three or four dba armies out of the size of a tactical army so um yeah, most of his stuff is, is Essex, so. Although I do like picking up the music and stuff at the beginning, but I tell you what, I've spent hours trying to find music that's appropriate to the, to the army, so I, I kind of need to avoid, I need to streamline that process a little bit and just get to the games, you know. Uh, I could make a better product, but then you're only going to see 25% of the quantity. So um, I think the important thing on the video is to kind of show the interact. You know, that's, that's the other thing is, is, I don't know if you've noticed also, is the videos have started showing how we put down terrain and stuff and we roll for it instead of, okay, these are the two guys and the terrain set up. So it's kind of a different format. I think it's a little bit better geared towards uh, beginners and how to get started, you know, so you can see kind of the flow of how the game goes instead of just, um, you know, struggle with a rule book and getting frustrated. Um, but anyhow, that's, uh, that's my long winded response to why we don't have pictures of the, uh, why we don't talk about the, the figures, but I do love talking about, um, as, as you know, uh, of manufacturers cause I surf a lot and I've got a lot of figures and, um, you know, I do like talking about um, who I would use for what figure and something like that. So, but this army in particular is, well, so far it's all been Essex so far. So, um, and so far this is uh, the, the Gallo Glass guys consist of. So, um, so yeah, we've got these guys to do. Then we've got a, uh, a couple of uh, stands of Scottish pikemen. We have figures for those. Those will be uh, gladiator figures that I've had for a long, long time. Um, I may replace the pikes on them so that we don't have a problem with them breaking later on down the road. Um, but we're going to have a couple stands of that. We've got a, a Scottish general that we're going to do. We're going to make him uh, Edward Bruce. Edward the Bruce. So uh, we've got that coming. And... Um, what else? Some cavalry elements of which I ordered, but um, they don't seem to budge. Apparently, the manufacturer I've never I've never ordered from them before, um, and they warned me they were busy after I placed the order in. And I said, okay, well I understand. I ordered them plenty in advance to get them. Will you guys notify me when they're shipped? And they said, well we will, but just so you know, um, we're kind of short-handed. And uh, due to the COVID situation, it's sometimes taking two to eight weeks for the parcels to arrive um, to the people. So I'm thinking, okay, well, no big deal. I got plenty of stuff to work on, but um, it's been two and a half weeks and they still haven't mailed them out or they haven't notified me. So I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I'm going to hang in there because I like the figures that they make. The for this, uh, for the light horse, for these Irish. So it's not Essex, but um, I've never bought from them before. So we'll see how that works out. Um, but anyhow, it's not a, it's not a huge problem yet. But, um, you know, it's one of those things, if you're not gonna tell me when they're gonna mail out, I mean, every day on the way in, I'm checking, okay, are they in the mailbox? Are they in the mailbox, you know? So normally I would have already gotten them had this situation that we're in not happened, but. Um, anyhow, um, okay, so we're done with that stage, so let's, uh, let's add a little bit more sunny skin tone. I'm not going to get discouraged, though. I got plenty of stuff to work on. They're, uh, they're not holding me up right now, as I generally do, um, leaders last anyways. So those mounted would end up being the last guys I would do on this army. So... We will see. I told him I was going to do an unboxing video on them when they came in. So 
know you guys like to see those and I like to do them. Those, I like those 10, 15 minute long videos. And him up. And these guys all have, actually I'm not sure if they have beards because they're all wearing a, a cough. C-O-I-F, a cough of chain mail. So they might have beards, but they certainly have these long walrus lice whiskers. So that's kind of a distinguishing feature of these guys. Okay, just painting some fingers here. Okay. Switch to this guy. So all these guys are going to be are a similar um, saffron type shirt color looking dude. The Scottish pipemen won't be. The Scottish pipemen will still be. They're still going to look like uh, plebs, and that they're not going to have any colorful clothing. But um, they're all going to be kind of unique looking, and of course the uh, the nightstand will all look different as well. So. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a flag on the night stand, which is a night general. I didn't want to do a Scottish flag because even though uh, Edward the Bruce is the brother of Robert, um, I don't want to put the you know the traditional Scottish flag there, uh, the yellow one with the um, with the red uh, uh, lion on it. Uh, I want to avoid that. I want it just to be him. It's going to be him and a couple other knights that served with him in uh, in Ireland. So, um, took a little bit of time, but I think I got some heraldry for that's accurate. I, I don't want to just pay generic guys with if if the information's out there, you know. Um, okay, so now did we do both of them? See, that's the problem with doing two. If I forget what stage we're on, let's add a little bit more of this, and then we'll do one more layer with some white in it. A little too moist. We need a little bit drier. You know what? I need to get something to drink. I'll be right back. So just uh, bear with me here for about uh, two or three minutes. I'll be right back. the shortest two minutes you guys have ever had. Okay. Back again. This video session is sponsored by Coke Zero. No, I don't have any sponsors. I don't want any sponsors. Not unless I can sit at home and do this while instead of going to work. But I don't think they're going to pay me that kind of uh, that kind of money. So I just want to be honest with you guys. So uh, okay, well, I missed it. We see some other questions. That's the problem with the chat. It disappears. So if I don't see it come in, it disappears. So sorry about not getting back to you. Uh, da, 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 da. So Big Al says, what figures would you recommend for a Hussite army? Wow. Um, if it was me, I would not use Essex. Because there's some other figure manufacturers that look more unique. Um, if I was going to build a Hussite army, which I'm not going to because Mitch already has one. Um, there's, um, there's a company called 15 millimeter co 15 millimeter dot co dot UK. Um, 
So if you do a search for that on the internet, they'll come. They each, so you can mix them in however you want. And they're older, they're older style figures, but they make a good variety of Hussite poses. Um, if you look on their medieval range, they'll have, it'll be split between Western and Eastern. I believe the Hussites are all under Eastern. And they have probably three or four different poses for guys with the flails. Um, and different guys shooting uh, the primitive arquebuses that would go in the war wagons. But I'm not sure if they make war wagons. So, you know me, I'm going to use a mixture of things. So I'd probably use maybe some uh, Essex war wagons um, and then some Essex figures and then mix in some of those 15, mil 15 millimeter CO figures as well. Um, Minifix makes a whole range of Hussites. Um, the problem with Minifigs is you're going to get eight or nine or 12 different poses in each pack. And the last time I ordered from them, even though I really like minifigs, uh, uh, the last time I ordered from them, it, it took them forever to get them. And they were, you know, they said that the molds needed to be done and it, it had some hangups, not knocking them. Cause I really like minifigs, but, uh, not strip minifigs, the, you know, the more modern minifigs, but you're still going to get lots of poses and, and you, lots of figures with only one pose in each pack. But they make, they probably make a dozen different foot figures for Hussites, just um, uh, minifigs alone. And they make a figure for, uh, what's his face, the, the main dude? Ziska. I believe they make a, a figure for Ziska. Um, haven't really looked at it because that's the. Uh, because that army really isn't on my radar. With that said, I would make sure that if I was doing any war wagons, and there may be war wagons in my future, not those guys, but I've got a couple of elements I may uh, I may build to bring my um, my Germans up to 3.0 standards with all options. But I would make sure that I would do the war wagons on the 40 by 40s, and not even show the horses. Just forget the horses. Just put them on a 40 by 40, and they play a lot better than a 40 by 80. Um, with the horses showing so but that's just me it's um so i may have i i may have to trim up the wagons so they don't overhang the 40 by 40 stand but um anyhow that's probably what i would do um yeah so um okay wardrobe the youtuber formerly known as iterate hobbyist is checking in Oh, excellent. Well, I know exactly who you are. We won't give away your real name in case you don't want to be known by that. But uh, War D Robe. War D Robe. Small D, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm scared of changing my name. But um, I don't know if there's any implications of people wanting to steal my identity. But I just always, uh, I've always posted as my real name. Um I don't want to be famous, but uh, I want to avoid the confusion. So, um, but anyhow, um, welcome. You like my consistency? Yes, I need to do that. I need to get these guys through. And even if nobody watches the show, um, I definitely like uh, the fact that people are checking in. I much appreciate it. But uh, yeah, I need to be consistent because. Um, there's other things I could be doing other than doing this, but this is a lot more satisfying. Even though progress is slow, it's still progress. Um, to give you an example, one thing I hate doing is editing videos or anything computer. What could happen is I could spend an hour and a half trying to find the perfect background music, not find it, and I wasted an hour and a half. I have nothing to show for it. Whereas this, even if I, all I got done was painting the flesh on one figure, I still moved forward. You know, I don't have to do that part anymore. So, um, yeah, I always laugh when people like people say that they would never, they can never paint because they don't have the patience for it. Well, they have patience for other things. You know, they just decide not to have patience for this. And maybe I'm the same way. I have patience to paint, but not doing other other things. So. Um, however long this takes, you never have to repaint them. 
You know, it's not like you spend three hours working on your yard and then a week later, you couldn't tell, you know, because it all grew again. <laughs> I find that a lot more frustrating than this. But, um, but I do burn a lot more calories mowing along than doing this. This is uh, what, maybe seven calories an hour if I'm lucky. Well, it depends how much I'm talking. <laughs> But, uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, sometime I need to dedicate four, 30 to 45 minutes a day to painting. Yeah, so normally I paint in the mornings um, before work. Long enough to, and I'm going to have to be quiet. I'm, I don't want to wake the other people that I live with here, you know, so that'd be kind of rude. they got to share the house with them, so I don't want to wake them up at, because uh, I, I wake up in the morning every, at 5 a.m. every morning. So, um if you guys want to come visit me, want to break into my house, make sure you you, you get in before 5 a.m. because I'm awake at that time. <laughs> no, every morning I, I wake up at 5 to try to do some of this to you know, do every day. And it kind of sets the pace for the rest of your day. So I'm trying to, to do that. But lately, if I'm going to do one of these paint along type things, um, it's the evenings when it's actually been more successful. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying and at least somebody's watching. I appreciate it. So, um, da, 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 da. let's see. Me too about changing the name, but no one can pronounce I, this is the itinerant. It's not a word that uh, I know. I had to look up what it is and it's like traveling, right? It's the traveling hobbyist. So I have a feeling that what you probably do for a living is uh, maybe you travel a lot for work and you try to bring your hobby with you, because uh, that would kind of make sense. But uh, yeah, that's kind of a Shakespearean word. Like I don't uh, really know what that means. So um, I think that's the problem. Not that uh, we're all too dumb for your handle. How about that? <laughs> so Wardrobe says, I would say wasting time on Facebook and YouTube is something that takes time away from painting. I need to be focused on painting the games and on playing the games and painting the miniatures. Yeah, so what I normally would do when I paint is I would have my phone and I would sit it, I would sit it down here, I'd prop it up on something, and I would listen to maybe one of your um, walk through the rules or something like that. The problem is, is that I could spend easily 30 to 45 minutes just searching for the perfect thing I wanted to see, and I've just wasted all that time. Um, so I'm trying to watch YouTube only like lunch. You know, at work, I'm, uh, I take a lunch break under a tree and get away from everything, and I usually watch YouTube. And there I'm not, I can't paint anyways. So, but that's what happens is, is um, and, you know, by the time you find it, the time that you have to devote for whatever you would have this in the background is consumed. And I'm sure there's other people that are like that as well. I think that um, since we have so many choices of things to watch between Netflix and Hulu and all the free stuff on YouTube and, and so forth, we just have so many choices that I personally find that after like five minutes if um, and... I'm not necessarily ADD, but I just know that there's really good stuff out there. So I don't want to spend half an hour on something that's that could be better, you know. So at least that's me. So if I'm filming this, even though you see that I'm distracted, I'm kind of interacting with you guys, and I'm not paint, 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 and being really efficient, I'm still doing paint stuff. So I'm still kind of on task. So I enjoy this a hell of a lot more. So... Um, but anyhow, um, yeah, and that's exactly what you were saying, yeah. <laughs> and right now, I like painting with the camera running and chatting with the audience, but the problem is you have to stop and read the chats. So I need to shut up and let you paint. <laughs> no, you don't. No, it's all good, you know. Um, you know why the chat part's good? Because we spend, obviously we enjoy doing all this stuff, okay. Um, because we do it for free, obviously. We spend all day, you can't talk to anybody at work about this. Um, usually can't talk much to people you live with about this, unless they're into it as well. So you kind of have to find the hobbyist type things. You know, the last, um, 
when we did conventions, our local convention here was two times a year. You know, back when we did conventions, you know, 2019, we traveled down there and put on games. It's a Friday, Saturday, and, and half of a day on Sunday kind of a thing. It's nowhere near Historicon, but it's still long enough. I could go down there and not play any games. Beers and... And that'd be a win too. So just being able to interact with folks that have a common interest um, is really cool. And you don't get to do that on a daily basis unless you're doing one of these type things. Because um, I can't talk to people at work about this. You know, they're, they're mutton heads and they're not interested in hit history or anything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, plus you're at work. So... Um, so yeah, it's uh, it isn't all about the painting because, like I said, I'm not I'm painting for myself. It's not like I got to get these guys done uh, by a certain time. And as a matter of fact, the fact that we don't have any any deadlines for any of these figures to be done with, I'm actually getting more done than when I did have deadlines because I don't feel like I've got as much pressure on me. Like I got to get these guys done by a certain show so that I can. Play. I mean, like these guys will get done when they get get, get done. You know, I've been talking about doing an Irish army done for by St. Patrick's Day for so long. I don't know why. It just seemed kind of a natural tie. Um, and uh, I, I think this time we'll do it, you know, because we started early enough. So um, I do, do need to work on my Irish phrases because if you've seen any of our gameplay videos, one of my favorite things to do is mock other people within the, ga within the frame of the game. So... Um, I, uh, I need to get some uh, choice Irish phrases to um, to say to people. So, But I am looking forward to uh, painting these guys. We're going to do some different things that we've never done before. Uh, i got an edifice I'm going to build. And uh, where is this thing? Uh, these little dragon eggs. These, well, not either big dragon eggs or we're going to build an edifice for these guys. And I did find out that it can be relatively small. So I'm going to put this on a stand that's not much bigger than this. But again, this is like a six millimeter terrain piece with a 15 millimeter figures because I like the six millimeter for the terrain so that it goes more into like the ground scale as opposed to the figure scale. Um, I just happen to like that, that look um, better. So we're going to build an edifice and um, we're going to have a camp for these guys and um, we're going to build some allies for them and, you know, my, my goal with, the, with this army is to be able to play them in Wimp Wars, to play them in Saloy Silliness, to play, modify them a little bit and play them in an open setting and they can be competitive. Um, so anyways, which is my uh, Middle Eastern guys, my uh, Courage guys I just finished. I'm not interested in playing them. I've spent 300 hours with them and I'm not, not that I don't want to play them, but I'm not that excited about them anymore because I want to move on to the next thing. Um... I mean, I love how they turned out, but I don't know if that makes any sense. It certainly wasn't the case 15 years ago when I started building DBA armies. I wanted to play the latest army that I had. I was excited about playing them. And now I'm like, eh, whatever, you know, I'll get around to playing them. There's a rumor that uh, they might be in the next gameplay video that we do, but we'll see. We'll see how that pans out. Um... But they are fun uh, to do. But, you know, since I don't have a deadline, I'm not painting for people. Um, a long time, I got talked into building something for someone. And I learned my lesson on the f early, early on. I don't paint for other people because I don't need that added stress of getting something done. Then my hobby becomes a chore. And I don't want to do that. Because I can't rush something. I don't want to... I want to do something as as good a job as I can, because it's satisfying, you know? I don't want to do a crappy job at something, you know, so. Um, but I don't want to be rushed either, you know? It'll get done when it gets done, so. Uh, okay, so it looks like you shut up and let me paint, but I continue talking, so. <laughs> okay, now I know, wardrobe, Did you, I guess your whole channel changed to that, because I subscribed to your channel. I wish I could do all those different games. I just, DBA kind of broke me. And it broke me from the standpoint that how a simple game can be so difficult to get right while you're playing. It. And it's because of the way it's worded and how abstract it is that I don't want to play other games wrong. And 
you know, it's not that I don't want to play other games. I don't want to be the guy on point learning the rules and teaching them to somebody else because it's not that I'm burnt out on it, but I kind of know what it entails from taking point in our group doing DBA. And it's, it's exhaust. It's not as exhausting as you want to get it right. You know, you want to, and there's always somebody Monday. Well, damn it. Why don't you make the video? I mean, we want to get everything right, but it's just, it just seems like it's impossible sometimes. So we'll do our best. We're going to make mistakes. And, you know, like I say, you know, you're going to get out of it what you pay in for it. You're, I'm doing them for free. So, you know, hopefully they get better every time and uh, we don't make so many mistakes. But, you know, it's um, it's not satisfying to do stuff wrong, especially when that's not what your intent is. So, um, okay. So we painted both of these dudes. Now we painted both of the flesh on these dudes. So we're going to continue painting these dudes as, uh, as a pair. So we're going to go ahead and paint. Uh, let's put the, let's put the hose on both of them. Now for a little bit of variety, we're going to do one. We're going to do some dark red on one of them. We're not going to go crazy bright. Okay. But we are going to add some color to them because we don't want everybody to be some off gray color hose. Okay. We're going to, we're going to add a little bit of, of this one. And, um, yeah, we'll do this guy here. Oh, which one of these two? Well, we'll do this one. Since this one's a little bit more drab color than this one, we'll do the more drab guy with the brighter pants to kind of mix, mix all that stuff up. So, um, but yeah, this, these set of rules have just been a headache. But I've got 15 years of my life invested in them, so I, I don't really want to throw them away and start over, you know? Um, I grew up doing stuff like squad leader and advanced squad leader, and I don't think it's that complicated, but I was a lot younger too, so maybe my head was emptier. But um, again, those games aren't abstract. So the differences with those is like, uh, you'd like look through the rule book and advanced squad leader and maybe you couldn't find something, but then you'd guess the rules were probably this. And then later on you'd find it and you end up being right. You guess in 180 degrees were wrong. It'll be totally, totally different. Um, so, um, yeah, but I sold all my ASL stuff. I, I just, I can't, I can't do games that take that long to, to, to get a result because you never know. Sometimes you could play and you may be able to play for an hour, two hours, three hours. You can't guarantee to have five hours in a game. Um, and if you do have five hours to play, I'd rather play five different rounds of it, not one for five. So, and I also got hooked on the whole, um, both people involved rolling off against each other type of thing. It keeps both players engaged. Um, all the time. This was just the first game that I encountered that, and it's uh, it's more immersive for both players. It's not like, oh, it's the prep fire phase for someone. Well, let me go. All right, so we're going to add a little bit of color, and if I don't like how this turns out, I can always go back and go over it in a different color. That's happened to me a couple of times and because I paint really, really thin, I'm not really covering up any detail. Um, so, you know, no harm, no foul. Uh, I wanna make sure this guy doesn't, I don't do so bright on his leggings. He ends up looking like um, some guy who's a member of a tercio from the 1600s. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't let you look like that. So, uh, okay, we got a few more things on here. Okay, wardrobe. Dude, you do not know how much I want to play two to three rule sets. I found one in Blitzkrieg Commander, but I want to try other rules just to see how they play and also gives me variety. I think I've had, if I had an opponent like you, I might stay interested in one to three games. Yes, I'm extremely fortunate. But it took me a long time to find that. I mean, it 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 took forever. It took until I was um, maybe forty 
until I was 40 to find that. So 40, 39, 38, you know, it's been about 10 years now. So um, you have ASL and SL as well. ASL is a beast. Even the veterans have to look up rules and I'm not one of them. Yes, I think I'm moving to smaller footprint scenarios like two by two up to four by four, depending on the scenario and the rules. Yeah, the only thing I hated about ASL and I refused to play is any any games, and there weren't there was more of them at the beginning, more of them with squad leader than with advanced squad leader is ones where like let's say you had board and and here's the part where it's amazing the things you remember and I haven't played in thirty years, thirty years. 25 years. I haven't played ASL in 25 years or or 20 years, something like that. Certainly not in the 21st century. I probably the last game I played was probably around 1997, 98. Um, take board two or three. Mm. Board two. Board two has the, the bigger hill. The hill 621, right? There's one scenario in the original Beyond Valor that said all these hill hexes are woods screw that i'm not playing that okay give me an overlay where i can put it on there and that's how i want to play if it doesn't have an overlay i'm not substituting terrain types i would refuse to play any of those um other than that i, I liked it and the and the best war game i ever played was a game of advanced squad leader between myself and another player and my other opponent was the and you never saw the other element, enemy elements. You, he would put the question marks up. So he would say, you know, if he would check your line of sight, and then he would he would move a counter and said, you see some, you get some rifle fire or rifle and machine gun fire from here, and then you would have to roll, and it was kind of hidden. And it was probably the most awesome game I ever played because you ended up doing things in that game that you would do in real life just to gather information, but then you would give no information away. So, like for instance, your scenario, your it, but we weren't playing real scenarios. We were playing scenarios that were made just for that. I only played like three games of it, but they were they were the most awesome games ever. But there'd be a scenario like you have to get these guys off of this edge of the board. Well, you would send a half squad up to a hill and, just to gather information, see if you could see other elements, what they were doing, where, where their locations were. You ended up doing like realistic type tactics. So that, that part was cool. But remember, this was probably 1996. When I, when I did it, so, you know, you couldn't really, I mean, Close Combat wasn't even out yet. You know, the Close Combat video game, and if they had that as a multiplayer game, that would be like the perfect war game, because I loved Close Combat. Um, and I just wish there was a way to play it with multiple people on the same side, because that was a really, really cool game. So, um, but yeah, World War II is really my jam, or was my jam. I, I don't World War II anymore, because... I want like an, um, I would, I had a friend of mine that said, Hey, the, you got to try this game. It's like the coolest game ever. It's combat commander. And I played two games of it and I disliked it. Not because of the randomness, not because of the, it's like DBA that you can't do whatever you want. It's because I want to roll real dice. I don't want to flip a card and see what the card is on the corner that it does. And worse than that, I don't want to see this card that's like maybe good for like a Stuka attack, but I'm not using it for a Stuka attack. I'm using it for the number in the corner. So I get to see a card and get to see all the stuff that I missed and I'm not using for it and get the, th I don't know. It, it's like, it's a little too much of like getting the rug pulled out from under you. Like, ah, uh -huh, you'll never get this. You know, I don't know. I didn't like that. Um, I didn't mind they didn't really have any vehicles. Um, I didn't mind that it was random and that you couldn't get your guys to listen to you. I like that kind of stuff because your opponent's also suffering those same consequences. I just didn't like the fact that um, you couldn't roll dice for effect. So, and I probably, if I played it enough, I probably would end up liking it, but I just don't have the time or desire to spend that much time learning a game. But people rave about that game. Um, I played uh, those type of games, those board games. I think it find, works a lot better as a computer game. Like, um, because the computer aspect keeps you from being able to play the game illegally and wrong. 
assuming it's programmed correctly, or because you didn't you counted your movement points wrong, because the computer won't let you move it. You're still playing a counters game, but uh, I like that a little bit better. It makes it easier running the game. Um, case in point is uh, the lock and load series. I wanted to try the lock and load series, but I didn't like ASL, right? Because I mean, the counters even look like it's like almost like a ripoff of it. Okay, so. I've got the computer version of the game. I know how to play the game now by playing the computer version, but um, it's different. And I, I watch reviews of people comparing Advanced Squad Leader and Lock and Load Tactical. And what I got the impression was is that Lock and Load Tactical almost was more basic than ASL. But after playing ASL many years, I like lock and load tactical better. And I, the reason I like it better is because you have the opposing die roll thing, like DBA, like you roll good, but your opponent also rolls good. So the effect isn't as good. But if you roll mediocre, but your opponent defends crappy, you may do some damage to them. I, I like that system of interaction. And I like that system of I go, you go, one time for all the Soviets to defensive fire. It's too, that's too staged. Um, so I like the lock load tactical system better than advanced squad leader. Um, I think their boards are really small though. Uh, there's not a lot of like maneuvering and stuff, but um, I wish they had done ASL on, on, on computer, you know, um, so that, um, you know, those board games make um, make the setup a lot easier. I've got a couple of... I've got one game that I played a long time ago, and I don't remember what it's called. I'm going to say it's called War in the East. I could get the game wrong, the, the name of the game wrong, but it was basically a core-level computer game, and I don't think it was the Gary Griggs B1. I think it was even before that that came out. This game probably came around out 1991. I mean, I, heck, we played it on a 286 or a 386 way back in the day. And um, it was just really basic. And, um, but it allowed, it came already set up. So you're not spending, you're not trying to play the whole Eastern Front and spending four days setting up the counters. The counters are already set up for you. And you can like save it and pick it up where you left off. Um, it's not like you're sitting there trying to play in all the Europa modules or something like that at once, you know? Um, so I think that those counter games are really good as a computer game. Not necessarily that they need to be a live action computer game. They can still be a counter type game, but it just allows you to set them up um, quickly. And, and it also allows to do things that would be a pain in the ass in real life. There was a series that came out in the mid 90s that I really, really loved. It was the V for Victory series. And they had four or five of each. They had Gold Juno Sword. They had a Stalingrad one. They had the Crusader battles. I may be missing one or something like that. And it was a counters type game where the counters were either, um, there were usually battalions, but sometimes they had some companies, like they'd have like Panzer Jaeger companies or something like that you could stack. And it had some stacking. I think you could, there were one kilometer hexes or something like that. And the game was kind of basic looking, but it was a nice basic looking game. But there was a supply mechanism in it that was really, really cool. And you couldn't do that to keep track of all that. It was just basically a bean counter. So that type of a game worked really, really cool. And I really enjoyed those by uh, 360, which uh, I guess turned into Atomic Games, which ended up being the people that made uh, 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 Close Combat. But those V for Victory games are cool. And I think they're available. You can play them free now. And uh, um, I think there's a thing called like DOS box or something like that. You go there and play them. You probably wouldn't want to play them now. They're kind of basic looking, but um, I played them quite a bit. You know, uh, have to be you know first person shooters or or that kind of stuff. They can be low animation, but still have the good thing that it allows you that they set up immediately, they clean up immediately. You can save them, and uh, they can do all that complicated math that some of us aren't really interested in doing, you know, and it keeps you from having to play them wrong. You know, nobody wants to play a game wrong. Well, some people may want to play a game wrong, but, um, okay. 
More wardrobe. There's a gentleman here in my area, STL. I'm going to say that's St. Louis, not Seattle. Um, St. Louis would be STL, what I would say. That has played mainly Fire and Fury and Command Decision in 15 millimeter and has done that for 40 years. I started with Command Decision way back in the late 80s. That, that was our go-to micro armor scale. So uh, His collection of miniatures and terrain is super, and he can run those games in his sleep. He designed scenarios. I've learned a lot from him. And my decision to stick with one scale was inspired by him. And now I'm trying to decide on a couple of rule sets. I'm getting close, but don't tell Curtis or modeling for advantage. They'd laugh at me for saying such nonsense. They know me too well. I'm not familiar with uh, modeling for advantage. So we're going to write his name down and we're going to check him out. Modeling for advantage. I do check out other people. But I know there's a lot of gamers that go into, into all different periods and all different scales. And I'm like, um, yeah, it's not me. So we'll check him out. Uh, Combat Commander was the war game that convinced me I could learn and play games like that. Best laid out and written rule set and best design from a UX perspective. Chan Jensen, the designer, was awesome. Uh, Rick Copen. Hello, Rick. How are you? It's a great point on the computer games. Uh, Lock and Load Tactical is my board tactical game of choice. Okay, cool. I'm glad you like that. Uh, you said, I you don't think you can really compare the two. Lock and Load has tight, smaller scenarios. Yeah, they just... I don't want to offend anybody by saying this, okay? Because I'm not... I don't want to throw lawsuits around. But it seems like... It's a ripoff of ASL. And the reason why is there's just so many similarities. I mean, hell, even the numbers are almost the same, but you know, whatever, you know, it's not a, it's um, lock and load tactical on the computer as a counter game looks awesome. I mean, you can zoom in there and it has lots of details. So yeah, I like them. My only gripe with it is that I got it when it was first available, when it first came out, like within three days. And I gave up playing it because the multiplayer, they, it just, it still wasn't working right. And I would have like people that wanted to play with me, people that I know in real life that wanted to play with it. And, you know, I'd tell like, uh, I'd tell like my wife, Hey, I'm going to go and play on Saturday morning, this game for like a couple hours. And it would take us like a freaking hour and a half to try to get it work right. And it wouldn't work right. And I would leave frustrated. So I took a gaming experience it, and I left pissed off about it because I had nothing to show for it. And I'm like, I just basically gave up, you know, I'll probably try it like in a year or so and see if they've got multiplayer working. I don't want to play games and it'd be a frustrating experience. And it's not about winning or losing. It's just about nobody was getting any joy out of it, you know? So uh, I'm sure they'll probably get it right. So opponent rolls, the die roll, very few charts needed. Yeah, I think it works really well. Um... <laughs> I'm keeping you from painting and me from cleaning up my game room. Well, you're welcome. You don't have to clean up your game room. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, was that was I right? Was it St. Louis STL? St. Louis STL, maybe Seattle, like on the the flight code for it. But um, since I don't fly a plane. Uh, uh, St. Louis seems like it would be uh, STL. It also could be Salt Lake, or that would be SLT. Salt Lake, ST, I don't know. I think St. Louis. That, if that's St. Louis, that's like in the middle of nowhere, right? Right in the middle of the US. Central, uh, Central time. As I like to say, sometime, it's only retarded by one hour. I know, but the people in the UK on, on Greenwich are like, well, you guys are retarded by five hours, you know? Eh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, so I, I think this is as far up as we're going to go on him. I don't mind if I'm not getting painting done. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not on a time crunch. I'm having a good time and... Uh, you know, interacted with some folks of a different thing. I just kind of wanted to let you know that I, I'm, I'm only stuck on medieval 
and Dark Ages is just um, it is really. Um, oh, okay. Here we go. St. Louis area. Okay, cool. It's STL. S E A is Seattle. Okay, S L C Salt Lake City. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm only stuck on DBA because it's just so easy to get a game in and it's so satisfying and it's time efficient and I get to paint and play with my own toys, but I'm a World War II gamer, but I'm also a picky World War II gamer. I could never handle playing a game this abstract that's World War II. Um, Command Decision, we played it for many years. We played it in, uh, I know that if you look at the rule book, it has pictures of a lot of stuff in 172nd scale miniatures, or I think... Uh, Frank Chadwick had a lot of uh, Roco mini tank stuff in there as well. Um, but, and I think just shortly when we stopped playing it, um, Old Glory came up with their command decision 15 millimeter sets because when we first started playing, wrong, but at least in the hobby store that I played in and what they had for sale, 15 millimeter wasn't a World War II scale. I know that's hard for people to wrap their head around that now but the first people that started putting a rule set and miniatures together packaged together that i remember was old glory with their command decision range um but that was in the late 90s maybe i'm, I'm sorry the late the late 80s early 90s mid 90s and then you know you started getting into the whole battlefront stuff and all that stuff but so at the time, it was either you did 172nd scale or you did micro armor. So we did micro armor. And the problem that I had with command decision is I, it wasn't the tank on tank stuff because it was very elegant the way Chadwick did his penetration values. They were really similar to um, things that penetrated, seven, you know, things that had like an armor value of. Um, of 12 was really close to being 120 millimeters of armor when you took the slope in and all that stuff in. So it was really like, almost like you took his number, you added a zero to the end of it, and that's how many millimeters that it had in real life. So there was, the factors were really correlated well with, with real life numbers, which is my preference of way of gaming World War II is dealing with things that correlate to reality so that you're learning as you're playing. I know I'm anal retentive that way, but whatever. Okay. So I, I like, I don't, I don't like factors of things. Um, I like, uh, you know, dealing with real, uh, things that correlate to real life. So you're learning as you go. Thanks. Correlated very well with, um, with real numbers. Um, but the way the infantry interacted with the tanks was very, very boring. And it was almost like tanks first, oh, we'll throw infantries just in case. Like for instance, infantries can attack tanks, but they've got to be damn near next to them. And that was never going to happen. Um, so, you know, it was like they almost got forgotten. So it didn't, even though it was a combined arms game, it was, it was almost like if you were going to play DBA and the Saloy didn't matter uh, at all. It was like, it just wasn't, it, just didn't encompass everything because uh, obviously I like tanks, but I, I like to use a little bit of everything. So it just items did not on the same level. So that was my only really gripe. But I, I grew up with that one to five scale system where, you know, one tank, it represents a platoon. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, command decision kind of needs larger games to work well. Yeah. Yeah, I had a bunch of stuff for the desert. I, I always like the desert. Everybody likes the desert. Um, the desert's cool. I love the, you know, who doesn't like the Africa Corps and and those British British cruiser tanks are just sweet looking. I, I love the camo and stuff on those guys. Um, so I like the, and they're very well balanced. Uh, both sides have pretty good troops and comparable equipment to fight each other. And, uh, you know, where the where the big nasty stuff happens, that's that was my two theaters that we kind of focused on. But I thought the Western the better theater because it was more balanced and the forces were a lot smaller. But um, 
Yeah, because you could just go on buying T-34s and T-34s and T-34s and T-34s and T-34s or build a crap ton of Russian infantry and never run out kind of thing. So, um, Okay, so we've got his leggings done. Let's, uh, let's just split off and paint this guy, okay? Because I'm getting sidetracked too much going on and, and dealing with somebody else. We need to pick a color for his belt and also his, um, his um, scabbard. And what I've been doing on him is using the same one. So let's just get the standard leather color. Make sure it hasn't been repeated on every single figure. It has not. And as a matter of fact, the more green figure over here has the less leather one. So this is the more green one of the two. So it'll have this one. So we're just going to move forward with this. Ah, but this is this is similar in color to his leggings. So let's not do that. See, all these things to consider, you know, so that uh, you can see some variety in the on the figures. Let's, um, all these behind the scenes things you guys don't see. This should work fine. This is different enough off the legging. These are my favorite paints. I know I've mentioned these before. Coat de arms. I love the way they, they, uh, Dun, 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 dun. What do you say on here? You've never been interested in the desert. Not sure why. I don't know why either. <laughs> I I like the desert, but um, I don't know if you caught me in my other video. I prefer gaming growing up, not playing Americans. I'm already an American. Okay, I like to role play a little bit and do crazy voices and stuff like that. I don't want to do American voices, okay? I'm, I'm already American. I don't want to play Americans. Um, and I find American tanks really boring. I mean, yes, you can make them cool and add other things on there, but they're just not very exciting. That's, I think, that's why German stuff sells so well, because their stuff is cool. Even though they're rat bastards... And nobody's playing Germans because they're freaking Nazi lovers. They're playing them because their equipment's cool, you know, and uh, they fought everybody and, uh, you know, and that's why I like the Eastern Front because both sides are a bunch of bastards and, you know, you, you, it's kind of nice. Like, which bad guy do you want to be, you know? <laughs> I always like the Eastern Front, but uh, that's why, that's why I think Germans are popular because they're everywhere. They have, you know. They have neat camouflage schemes with the, you know, if you like the gray, you can do that. If you can do the three color, you can do that as well. Um, there's lots of information available on them. Um, anyhow, and people, people generally like to play the underdog, especially people, I've noticed people tend to like to play the side that didn't win to try to do better. Um, at least anybody I grew, I, I grew up gaming with. That was kind of the thing, you know. Um, but anyhow, so um, I tend to like to play theaters that are I not not really a fan of um, the Western Front, like the Normandy stuff. Generally, lots of people doing it. Like I said, I'm already American, so um, you know what I really don't like? I really don't like, and I do like playing the, the Commonwealth and, and the, the English, but I don't like the the English like tanks late war where they, you know, they're painted in the overall green, but then they put the white star on their roof to identify as allied. That's like really come on man they're not american tanks why are they having a, a white star and i understand you you you've kind of have to do that thing because that's that's kind of how they were painted in real life but i don't like it. you know i don't i think they should have their own their own um they have their own history now the british stuff i love the symbols that they had for like their units with the desert rats and all the other they had cool symbols for for their units and of course, the Germans had cool symbols as well. So the British and the German units had cool symbols for their uh, for their armor divisions and stuff like that. The Russians kind of just did whatever. Doesn't really appeal to me. 
And American stuff was like, their stuff was just like almost like a license plate number for the, for the most part. Um, so yeah, my preference is actually the British and, uh, and the Germans uh, units, so. But hey, there's a little bit for every, of everybody, but that's what I grew up playing was all World War II stuff. That was, that was the thing to play, so. I said before, it's kind of the, night, the perfect balance between brute force and technology. You know, the technology isn't overpowering like it is now. DBA, which is funny because it, it never occurred to me to play anything that was like this ancient and medieval ever before this until I realized, oh, I can play this game in an hour. Cool. Hooked. Yeah, this, I love these coat to arms paints. They just, they flow like nothing else. And the way I understand it is these are the same manufacturers, the people that make the original Citadel. And it makes sense because those flew, those flowed really well. They, they flow well and they cover really well as they're, as they're, as they're flowing. You know, it's not like they're opaque or anything. I'm sorry, not like they're transparent or anything. So. Yeah, when you're doing World War II stuff, the big gripe was always like, man, I wish there was a color picture of these guys so they could see what color. You start doing these ancients and medievals and you start realizing, man, I wish there was some information on these this, these guys, who the hell they even were. You know, because it's just totally, some some civilizations, there's a lot of information on them. Some, there, there isn't anything available on them. You know, because they didn't have a written language. through nothing known about them through their own point of view. Because you need to have a balanced point of view. You don't want to just take one side's... You don't want their what's written about their just from their enemies. Because they'll be like, oh yeah, they were badasses because, you know, they took them a long time to, to, to knock them out. You don't want them to seem like they were a bunch of wimps. Well, why did it take you guys 10 years to, to, to subdue these people? You, know, you want stuff that's from both sides. So. I've kind of a balanced information. But it was interesting, as much of a World War II nut as I was, um, I've, um, you know, I listen to other stuff, a podcast, one of the podcasts that I listen to that I really, really, really like is uh, Dan Carlin. And he did this multiple series. Well, the multiple series he did on World War I was excellent. But he just did this, he's doing this one on the Japanese in World War II. And I, I feel like I've got pretty good information. The, 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 Jap, the Pacific Theater is not really my theater, but there was all kinds of stuff there that, that I was listening to, stuff that I had no idea about. But it was, you know, stuff about, you know, the fall of the Philippines and stuff like that that I really didn't have any interest in. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of, you come across new information, you know, so... That was kind of cool. But yeah, I never really got into the Pacific. Now, we did do uh, quite a bit of naval war gaming. So, you know, we did do uh, Guadalcanal stuff. And again, we want a, we want a, we want fair fight type stuff. So anything after Guadalcanal, we're not doing. You know, we're not doing any of the stuff in 44 and stuff like that where the Japanese were just totally outmatched, you know, with their aircraft carriers and stuff like that. So... Um, but I do know people that I've game with and they want to play who they are like there's Americans who want to play American I'm like dude you're already American play somebody else but hey as long as everybody gets to play what they want it's just a game but let's just say I'm not one of those people that um, that likes these Hollywood movies that come out and they have to have some American in it so they could relate to it. That's not me. 
I'm the guy that gets upset when, uh, you know, a battle of the Atlantic movie is not seen through British eyes, but through American eyes. Like, come on, folks. They were they were there three three years longer before the U.S. even got involved in it. You know, it's not that Tom Hanks destroyer movie. It should have been a British destroyer, you know, or a Commonwealth destroyer that they've been in it since '39. It, that's just me, you know. Um, I like to see everything from all kinds of different perspectives. So, uh, okay. Man, we got a lot of stuff. Cool, you're keeping me busy. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, wardrobe. You're not getting a lot of cleaning done, but that's okay. You didn't want to do that anyways. Uh, okay, you say, possibly because I'm not a big fan of tank battles. I prefer combined arms and some infantry only. Okay, probably talking about the desert. Yeah, the desert was heavy on the tank side, especially for the British who had a, a, a lack of, of supporting infantry. Um, they had a lot more tanks for infantry than the other way around. So, uh, okay, besides creating a U.S. Armored Infantry Battalion to model my GPA's unit, I'm not sure what that means. I'm focusing much of my efforts on the British side of D-Day and Market Garden. Okay, cool. Uh, all the materials of the Germans would be the reason to play them. So many freaking tank styles. Absolutely. Um, as I've watched your vids, it seems to pause often and cycle spinning cycle and pausing it's not like your picture is bad it's amazingly clear well that's good um so i uh, i'm filming off my phone which is what i film off everything else and they recommend that you don't do live on mobile because it's not fast enough and i've been over this b before but just to kind of give you a perspective i can't hook on to my local uh internet because they they say if you're going to stream in 1080 you need to have at least uh, six, six megs. I think it's six megs or six gigs. I forget what it is. See how I'm technology challenge? But the number is the six. Six to download, three to upload. My home one is on a good time, three to download and less than one to upload. So I go on mobile because I have freaking almost a 5G signal here. I'm like a download of 60 and upload of 30. So I'm 10 times more than the recommended for 1080, and it still hangs up for some reason. I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah, I apologize for that. I don't know why. I can't. I I I have the internet here, but it's it's damn near useless. We can't even um, we can't even stream one show reliably. We'll try to watch you know one thing on uh, Netflix as a family show and. It's rare that we can get through the damn thing on the first try. It's really frustrating, but my internet signal through the phone is spectacular. So um, I'm not sure why. Uh, -da -da -da. You also say, I'm curious if you're interested in ancients and read a lot about them, or you pretty much just play the game and paint the figs. So I go, it's my excuse to learn about an army. I mean, there's obviously some periods in some armies that I'm a little bit more interested in. Um, but it's an excuse to read about history that I just had cursory knowledge about. And I shouldn't say cursory because I've always been interested in history. So, um, um, it's my excuse to learn about history. So if it wasn't historical, I wouldn't be interested in doing this. So, um, it's a way to learn about history and play it or, you know, participate in it, so to speak. Um, so yeah, um, I didn't know anything about these guys and it's just an excuse to learn about this kind of stuff. So um, yeah, um, I've tried ancient samurai, fantasy, mass, black powder, and I just can't get into them. Yeah, I, I, I can't get into the periods where everybody has the same uniform but just different colors. So like Napoleonics was never my thing. Um, I'll play it, but um, it doesn't it doesn't appeal to me. Um, I'm a believer we should all have a minimum of 200 megabytes download speed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that what that number is? The megabytes is the the number you've got to have. Um, I'm supposed to get six with DSL. I have DSL at home. I don't have, they don't offer fiber here. 
I live in the middle of a city. You know, I live in the middle of a progressive city that should have this kind of stuff. And, and they don't, you know, it's one of those things. It's a monopoly. You know, I'm anti-monopoly. It's like, nah, we don't want to give it to you. Well, hold on a second. What if we want to pay for it? Nah, you don't get it. Mm, sorry. That's, <laughs> that doesn't work for me. But there's some people that have terrible cell phone service at home and good, um, and they might have fiber. I'd, I'm, I would rather have what I have. Okay, because I could take this wherever I go and film at Mitch's and that kind of stuff. But, um, oh well, you know, slight inconvenience. But, uh, yeah, this phone can handle 8K filming. Um, I don't know why it's probably only streaming at 720. But, oh well. Um, it'll be getting better as we go. So, All right, so we've, we're done with uh, his, little, um, his little accoutrements. Let's... Um, Let's paint his sword hilt and the pommel. We use this little bronze color. Boy, this is a useful freaking color. That was another thing about painting these ancients and stuff. You know, when you're painting World War II stuff, I don't, um, you know, you don't get to use bronze and reds and that kind of stuff, so. Okay, so that's done. Let's paint up his, um, the handle of his sword, whatever the hell that's called. <laughs> it's, it's late for me. It doesn't matter. I'm on a roll. I'm not stopping until this guy's done. I am not stopping until he's done. That's, that's how you get things done. So I don't get a whole lot done during the week. Um, but that's why I try to kick ass on Saturday if we're not traveling. I do want to get these guys done. You know why I want to get them done? So I'm going to start working on the next guys. I'm getting, I'm getting more done with this now that there's no conventions and nothing to build for than I was before. I think what it is is I'm filming more. The I'm doing a lot more filming than I am doing convention stuff. So it's like a more of a reason to build for the for a battle that may be filmed than for just a tournament at its convention that you travel to. So that doesn't mean we're not gonna go to conventions, but when the heck are we gonna have another convention? It's anybody's guess, right? So it's better not to be excited about that. So we're fortunate that um, there's a lot of people that, um, that have no one near them to play. So, um, as much of a pain in the ass as it is, we're at least in better shape than a lot of other folks. So, and we'll be back to doing conventions once they decide to have them again. Okay. But at least we can have this interaction. Meanwhile, hey, the... but yeah, the um, the nice thing about these ancients and um, and medieval is you don't get into it. There are a lot of different rule sets, but it doesn't mean need to be. There doesn't seem to be as much of a competition as far as scale. There's not like a scale of war. Um, if you're going to do World War II, there's people that do. 20 millimeter, like what I do. I do 20 millimeter skirmish. That's my scale. And there's people that do micro armor. And although micro armor seems to be not as popular as it used to be, all the people that do in 15 millimeter, the 28s, that kind of stuff. So, you know, you've got, com you've got competition and distractions from different scales for just a time period and different rule sets. So it's like a double whammy. It seems like ancients and medievals, 15 millimeter has. A, for not skirmish games, I would say probably has 75% of the market. Um, most people are doing 15 millimeter. So it's not like, yes, there's some people doing 28s, but for the most part, from what I see, uh, most people, 15 millimeter is the scale. And yes, there's some people that do occasionally other scales and stuff like that. And, and it's not that, you know, the other scales suck or anything. It's just that it's nice that you go and you bring what you've worked on and there's a lot of people that have their things based 
and in the same scale as you, so it's compatible to play with them. So that's kind of a nice thing, you know. Um, whereas the World War Twos, you you got all the different kind of scale differences going on. So I I said I settled on twenty millimeter for the skirmish because there was just at the time when I was doing it, which was well over 20 years ago, that was the skill that all the vehicles were available in. I mean, 28 millimeter for World War II really wasn't even a thing. Um, I probably would not have done 28s anyway, so if I got started doing World War II, I probably wouldn't do 28s because I didn't grow up with a Warhammer, so I'm not, that's not my scale. Um, and, um, me I'd probably be the exception to it I'm, I never really got into the fantasy 28 millimeter stuff so okay so we got his helmet done let's paint the um, so much for assembly line right broke off and started finishing this guy Hey, paint however you want to paint. There's one painter out there that does a lot of DBA armies, and I don't remember what his name is. Um, I don't want to say who it is because I'll probably just get it wrong and say, oh, it's the wrong guy. But this guy does everything back asswards from the way I do it. He like, he'll like base them first and do the base and then paint the figures on the base. And it works for him. He does a really good job on stuff. So, hey, whatever works for you, just keep going, you know? We don't all have to paint the same way. The assembly line doesn't work for me because I find that one of the most annoying things for me is to put one figure down and pick another one up. Um, and that's, I've noticed I've left things off. Like I'll finish the figure and go, oh shit, I didn't paint this guy's belt because I was like assembly line and maybe didn't stop on the last guy or, so it doesn't really work for me, uh, especially with the wet palette that I can keep the, the same color active for a long time, but and I also would, I'd rather get one figure done every two days than no figures done for two weeks and then two weeks, eight are done all on the same day. It's, it's easier for me to show the progress so that I don't fall off the wagon, so to speak. So I'm like, well, oh, I got one guy done. Let's get another guy done. And then, oh, I got like five guys done. It's, it's for my own nefarious purposes of staying on track and not falling off the wagon and, uh, and finding something else to do. Okay, so let's paint the, um, the shaft of this axe. Let's see, we got anything new out here? Da -da 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 -da. GPA Grandpa, okay. That's crazy. I don't know what crazy part. I'm not going to get it, but I can get up to 950 MBS, almost a gig. I just learned this the other day. I think that MBS number is the one that, I guess that's what, millibytes per second? Okay. I think the number they say that you need for 1080 is 6 millibytes per second is consistent. Um, six down and three up. And I get, I don't even get a consistent three down and I don't even get one up. So I can't stream from my DSL, but my phone can get 60 down and 30 up consistently. So, I don't know why it's working. It may also be that as I get more subscribers, I get more people watching my stuff. I may some of, I'm speaking decisive about what color I want for the shaft of this. Cause I like how this first guy turned out and I don't remember what color I used. And it's okay for them all to be a little different. Cause you know, these guys just kind of randomly chop down trees and
think that's this one. I think it's the, I think it's this one. So I don't know if it's one of those things that as I get a larger market share of people that are watching, they'll let me they'll let me uh, upload these things in 1080. Because what will happen is is after I do this thing live, I'm sure there's some kind of a delay. But after I do these things live, uh, I don't have to do anything else. I just shut it down, and about eight to twelve hours later, I'm able to share it. So if you don't catch me live, you're going to have to wait eight to eight to twelve hours to see it in its full resolution on YouTube, because it, you know, it literally will, will show me a video there and it'll say processing and it'll stay processing. It'll process it all the way through in like two four. And then after that's done, it'll do it all the way through in like 360 and then in 480, whatever. So it's kind of a long process. And it never gets to do it in 1080, even though it's filming it in 1080. So um, yeah, I don't know what it is, but we're going to move forward. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not certainly not going to wait around and not do a video until I, I can figure that out. I just wish you guys had had a little bit better resolution of what I'm doing. Um, Fortunately, the videos that we are filming are in 1080p, and those seem to turn really turn out a lot better. And we've managed to get a pretty bird's eye view of the of the um, of the battle, so you guys can see uh, some of the angles and overlaps and that kind of stuff a little bit better than what we were doing before. So it's getting better. Okay. Now, even though I'm not being as efficient as I could be, the fact that I've stayed on here and continued powering through this is the more important thing. So. I love painting these wooden things that aren't wooden and try to make them look wooden. Okay. Yeah, I don't paint anything out of the bottle except the metallics. Everything else gets thin, so it flows better. Okay, we need to do a little bit of white to highlight this. Maybe. I'm not going to go crazy with it, but. Okay, so he's done. What's left to do on this dude? The shoes. Thy shoes. Okay, we're going to make these blackish and highlight them a little bit in white. And then we'll give them the known, the, um, the known oil wash on, um, I, I shouldn't call it wash because it's so controlled, uh, but the little treatment on it. And then we'll come back in the morning and we'll, and we'll clean that up where we did that and, and, and add the highlights to it. Yeah, that's some kick-ass numbers right there. I'd be very happy with that. Yeah, a little bit more white.
Okay. What did we say we had left to do on him? Oh, his mustache. The most important thing. The most important thing in the mustache. Now we got a blonde one and we got a brown one. This guy's gonna be this guy's gonna be a redhead. Alright. Orange brown. Now he's got these long whiskers like a the dark ages, he probably smells like a walrus too. black. Let me make sure there's no new activity. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, by the way, please don't take my cycling circling comment as a complaint. Just wondering. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm technology challenged, not because I'm not good with technology, but they keep moving the football. And since I don't use technology for my job, I don't want to, I hate keeping up with the Joneses. I it just, you know, uh, these people come up with new phones and everything just so you keep spending money. I'm like, I want to just be happy with what I have and be able to enjoy it. You know, when it stops working, that's when you need an upgrade. But I think Wargaming is pretty good about that. It's not like all of a sudden, you know, I got to learn how to paint again, you know, so. Um... Your, mo your most recent live stream today has been waiting for four hours. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it happens, but you know. Um, the resolution is fantastic, better than many. It just pauses sometimes. Yeah, hopefully when, uh, when it goes and, and compiles that into the actual video, it doesn't have those pauses, but if it does, you know, not doing these videos isn't gonna help. So we'll just have to power through it, maybe. You know, they, they help me out and maybe I'll say something that'll make somebody go, aha, you know. I, I mean, I don't have all the answers. I don't, I'm not sure I have any answers, but I, I probably have a different perspective of looking at things than, than, than many other people. Um, I've been doing this... Um, I've been doing this since 86. So, um, of course, the stuff from earlier than, the stuff from the first 10 years sucks, okay? And it's gone, it's gone to other places. I don't want that anywhere near me. But um, I've been paying pretty consistently since the late 90s, quality-wise, stuff I'm happy with, so. Oh, yeah. This guy's a ginger. Now, I got to be careful. I want to make sure that I don't make it look too close to his skin tone, and then you can't tell his mustache is there. I think we're good with that. I don't want to highlight it with any blonde because I don't want it to look too blonde. It needs to be reddish. All right, let's see if we can get a good view of these guys here. Oh, we got to do null and oil, but we can do that later. It's not going to look dramatically different, but it is It is subtle when you do that little bit. Now, let's see. And this is the lighting, of course. The lighting looks great here, but it seems like on this phone, when I put the lighting here, it just washes all the colors out. But here's our new folk. Here's our new guy right here. So we're going to put some null oil on, and then uh, we'll leave him alone until uh, tomorrow morning. And this will be the third guy. And of course, we've already started working on this one, so we should be able to finish him up tomorrow as well. And that'll be one third of the uh, of the bladesman done. And some of these other ones will go a lot quicker. Like for instance, these guys have a complete male suit on, so they've got lot, lots less details to paint, so. 
they just have like a face and the big old traditional whiskers and I'm not sure if these guys had beards too, but it's not showing because they're wearing a cough on their head. So a man cough. I was surprised to find out that. <laughs> see here all we want to do is gently hit this axe and the helmet we're not going to add any on the uh, chain mail it's dark enough and we did a dry brush treatment to it and then this guy's done till uh, in the morning we'll mess with him in the morning so yeah a productive evening even though I only got one guy done. But hey, that's this is at the speed of Tony here. So, you know. But anyways, uh, thanks for joining me, guys. Almost got two hours in. So, hey, that's a uh, school night, uh, a work night. So, but anyhow, um, don't forget to subscribe to uh, my channel. That helps out a lot so we can improve visibility and maybe get um, better uh, resolution offered to us. I'm not sure how it works. Can't seem to get a correct answer on that, you know. But um, but anyways, this, we'll finish the Skype in the morning and then we'll take pictures of him to see how he, uh, how he turns out. And then uh, tomorrow, we'll, this guy's going to be on our, on our to-do list. And then I think what I'm probably going to do is roll into these guys that are fully covered in mail, which is what this will do is these guys that are wearing kind of like a padded jacket also as well. So we're going to do them in kind of in groups of four. Um, and um, you know, we did all the mail drive running first. So, uh, But anyhow, um, yeah, plug it right along. So I want to get these guys done because then if the, um, when they, when these guys are done, if, if the mounted still hasn't showed up, we're going to go ahead and do uh, Edward the Bruce. And I love doing heraldry stuff. So we'll do him and his two other knights that uh, went with him for our uh, night general stand. I already got a figure picked out for him. I'll have to figure out the other uh, nights. So um, anyhow, we can talk some figures then when we get to that point as well. So, cause it will be a mixture of manufacturers. It won't be, uh, won't be Essex on those exclusively. All right, so um, thanks for watching and uh, happy painting to you guys. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.